Hello and welcome to our presentation of Christmas results. It's been a fascinating reporting season, the one time of year when we get a read of trading performance right across the grocery sector and find out how successful retailers have been at securing sales at the most important time of year. My name's Nick Gladding and over the next 15 minutes I'll talk you through how Christmas played out for the sector. We'll look first at results for the retailers that have reported and then draw together the themes that shape trading overall. This video is the first in a series of three that we'll be releasing over the next few weeks. We'll be airing a follow-up video next week on what to expect in 2018. In this video, my colleague Laura will talk you through some of the key themes we expect to influence trading in the year ahead. We won't be able to cover off all the issues in the time we have, so we'd like to hear from you if you've got any questions you'd like us to answer. Just send through your questions to socialteam at igd.com and Laura and I will answer them in a follow-up video soon. So back to Christmas trading, and the chart on the screen shows like-for-like -like performance over the last three Christmases. There are some big variations in sales growth, both between retailers and over time, so over the next few slides we'll have a look at these results in some more depth. The first point to highlight is that discounters, as a group, were the obvious winners this Christmas. Shopper enthusiasm for discounters came out strongly in our Shopper Vista survey that we ran just before Christmas, when 25% of shoppers we interviewed said they planned to buy more food from discounters this Christmas. This time, Lidl narrowly beat Aldi into second place, with growth of 16% just ahead of Aldi's 15%. Lidl's growth rate will have been helped by an acceleration in its store opening programme and by a shift towards larger stores. Both retailers are now expanding by around one store per week. Like for Likes will also have been solid, helped by Aldi and Lidl's growing reputation for innovative premium products. In Christmases past, shoppers tended to revert to the big four for their big shop. But with a wider Christmas range and a stronger reputation for quality, discounters' market share held up this Christmas. In the variety discount sector, B&M traded very strongly on the back of a major store opening programme. But Like for Likes were also strong as it ramped up investment in grocery and FMCG ranges. These numbers don't include an extra £80 million from B&M's new Heron stores in the north of England, where sales were strengthened by targeted improvements to ranges. And there was also decent growth from Poundland, suggesting that despite financial troubles at its parent Steinhoff International, the UK business remains in a fundamentally solid position. Indeed, with new financial backing secured, Poundland has just announced that it will roll out its Pep & Co clothing offer to 300 shops. At the Big Four, growth was stronger at this Christmas than last. Leading the field was Morrison's, where like-for-like -like sales were boosted by sharp retail execution, a drive to improve availability, and price investments to drive volumes. Tesco delivered the biggest pickup in like-for-like -like growth of the three retailers to have reported, driven by strong gains in food, particularly in fresh food. Like-for-like -like growth would have been higher still were it not for P&H's collapse, which led to shortage of tobacco. Had this not happened, like for likes would have been around half a percent higher. Sainsbury's Christmas was solid, with like for likes just ahead of 2016. Grocery sales were up 2.3% as shoppers responded to Sainsbury's drive to build a more distinctive proposition with a stronger own brand and taste the difference offer. The surprising element was a fall in general merchandise sales. In part, this was caused by a weak market and by challenges in the toy category. The closure of Argos stores and disruption from store upgrades also impacted. The result we don't yet have is Asda, but there are signs that trading was very good after two years of falling sales. Press reports suggest 5% like-for-like -like growth and that Asda gained customers from the rest of the big four as it focused on better stocked and easier to shop stores, sharper prices and a much improved fresh offer. Among the premium players, growth was weaker than 2016, despite the impact of rising prices, reflecting increased competition from the discount sector and recovery by the big four. Waitrose pointed to the exclusion of New Year's Eve from its trading figures as a reason for its slower growth, but emphasised strong online sales and the volume growth of its premium Waitrose One brand. For M&S it was a disappointing result. It was the only player to report a negative like-for-like, like, impacted by pressures on shopper budgets and limited price investment. An under-trade in the wider M&S business also won't have helped. Worth a mention too at this point is Majestic Wine. After a bumper year last year, it felt the pinch from stronger competition, both from the Big Four and Aldi and Lidl. 
It is keen to grow its reputation for, as a destination for quality wines and move away from competing on entry-level products. We don't have a very complete picture of the convenience sector from these results, but there are some interesting numbers. Co-op delivered very impressive 6% growth over the two weeks to New Year's Day when it benefited more from last-minute shopping. Investments in seasonal lines and numerous improvements to stores to make them more mission-focused also helped. Booker reported some very good progress with like-for-like -like sales on non-tobacco lines up over 6%. Sales through Budgeons and Londis stores were particularly strong with progress too through Premier. These results will boost the attractiveness of the business to Tesco ahead of a vote by shareholders towards the end of February. For NYSA, the big jump in total sales reflects the inclusion of many new stores it now serves. 140 extra from Costcutter, plus some McColl stores previously served by P&H. Also important were significant organic expansion through contract wins and improved like-for-like -like sales, particularly in fresh food. This puts the business in a strong position ahead of its acquisition by Co-op. So putting it all together, this is the view we get from Kantai World Panel. Data here is for the 12 weeks to December the 31st. Sales rose by 3.8%, much faster than the 3.1% from the previous 12-week period. Numbers for Aldi and Lidl were very similar to what they've reported, and there was good growth too from Mercado, which hasn't released a trading statement. The negative co-op results appear to contradict the very positive number we've just seen, but it's pulled down by the disposal of 300 smaller stores to McColl's almost a year ago. In all, sales were about £1 billion higher than the equivalent period of 2016, as higher inflation influenced basket size. Cantar measured like-for-like -like inflation at 3.7%, implying only a tiny contribution from higher volumes as households were impacted by falling real wages. This pattern is confirmed by just-released data for December from the ONS. Its numbers offer a wider read of the market than Kantar and show food retailers growing value sales by 2.9%, but with volumes slightly negative. So turning to the key trends that drove Christmas performance, it's clear that investments in own brand paid off as retailers worked to strengthen their profitability. Let's have a look at a few examples. At Morrison's sales of the best were up by 25%, following a near doubling of the range to almost a thousand lines. This allowed Morrisons to extend its appeal with customers wanting to trade up at Christmas. Free From also drove sales, with the range included in its food to order service for the first time. At Sainsbury's, nearly 200 new food lines were launched for Christmas, almost half of which were for Taste the Difference. Sales of the premium range increased by 6% and own brands share of the sales mix by 1% as Sainsbury's continued its drive to become better recognised for innovative and distinctive foods. At Waitrose, the Waitrose One Premium range was again an important driver of volume, with sales up 4.2% on last year. Tesco Finest sales were also up 4%, while Co-op benefited from innovative seasonal additions to its irresistible range, including Prosecco flavour snacks and Christmas tree shaped crisps and shortbread biscuits. New lines played an important part in Little's trading success. Its premium range was expanded this year to include products such as its 24-month matured Christmas pudding and pink gins. With shopper budgets pressured by pay rises not keeping pace with inflation, retailers took action to heighten their value credentials. Recognising the power of fresh products to draw in shoppers, all retailers joined in the battle for low-priced vegetable packs. Tesco and Little introduced 29p bags across their festive five offer. Sainsbury's joined the fray with 25p packs, and Asden followed with 20p bags and Aldi on 19p. In general, promotional activity was slightly lower than a year earlier, as retailers focused on all-round value credentials, as price versus the discounters became more important. Tesco reported that promotions were flat versus Christmas 2016, and Morrison's continued to emphasise its way down price crunch and use promotions more selectively. That said, promotions still have their role to play, particularly outside the Big Four. Waitrose, for instance, used a series of one-day offers with half-price deals on box chocolates, counter cheese and Christmas cakes to generate footfall, despite the risk of this complicating shopping for its customers. And we shouldn't forget Black Friday. Morrison's used this to good effect at the start of the season for its Black Five Days campaign, tailing the promotion to its strength in fresh produce. While many retailers did not participate, Little did join in for the first time, with bargains on deluxe Serrano ham and a variety of non-food items, champagne and kitchen electricals. 
Improvements to operations also help to support stronger sales growth. At Morrison's, a new automated stock ordering and forecasting system was rolled out to most categories in time for Christmas, helping to improve availability and stock ordering throughout the period. Gaps in Ambient, for instance, were down by 30% on last year, benefiting supplies. Sainsbury's reported an excellent operational performance, with great availability across its stores and the lowest level of waste ever across the group. As they're also focused on improving retail execution. Combined with stronger pricing, this helped to reduce its losses to the discounters. Tesco's operational performance was challenged by the need to rebuild the tobacco supply chain following the collapse of P&H. This meant putting an extra 5,000 deliveries to stores through each week to make up volumes. Online was an important feature of Christmas trading at the end of a year of major investments. At Sainsbury's, online grocery sales were up by 8% and by 20% in Christmas week, as investments such as the expansion of same-day delivery to more stores made the service more convenient. Basket size was also up slightly year on year, and this was despite dilution from the launch of Sainsbury's Chop Chop rapid delivery service for smaller orders. At Tesco, the expansion of same-day delivery helped online grocery sales to grow by 5%. The rollout of both its mobile and desktop sites has made ordering much easier. Morrisons.com sales grew by 10% as StorePick was introduced in new areas to support the core .com service provided by Ocado. Morrisons also reports its wholesale business through Amazon is growing steadily, creating further opportunities for suppliers. And finally, in non-food, we saw mixed performance across the sector as retailers reworked their offer. Overall, clothing sales growth softened because of the mild early winter, and in general merchandise, growth was concentrated in new own brand ranges. Morrison's home and leisure range was completely renewed ahead of Christmas, with the launch of a newly designed kitchen and homewares range. In addition, sales were boosted by the launch of the Nutmeg Women's Wear range at selected stores. Tesco's new cook, and Fox and Ivy ranges drove growth of over 6% in the cook and homewares ranges. This helped to compensate for weaker growth in home electronics, following Tesco's decision to deprioritize these low margin categories. At Sainsbury's, general merchandise sales fell by 1.4%, impacted by a very challenging market, particularly in toys, where Argos is a leading player. General merchandise was also disrupted at the many stores where Sainsbury's has installed an Argos concession and by the closure of Argos units at home-based stores. If you're a supplier and would like to learn more about the trading opportunities in the year ahead, we have a very full lineup of IGD events over the next six months. First up is ASDA on February the 8th, where you can hear directly from the new leadership team. Confirmed speakers include the new CEO, Roger Burnley, Chief Merchandising Officer, Jesus Florente, and Retail Operations Director, Roger Hemmerdinger. In May, we'll be hosting the Tesco Business Update, this year from the new venue of London's Excel Centre. Leading the lineup on stage will be Dave Lewis, Chief Product Officer, Jason Terry, and Chief Customer Officer, Alessandro Bellini. And then in June, we have the 2018 Sainsbury's Trade Briefing, when speakers will include CEO Mike Coop and Food Commercial Officer, Paul Mills Hicks. As always, there will be extensive networking opportunities at all of these events. If you'd like to join us, then all the event details are at igd.com slash events. So that's about it from me, but finally a reminder to email any questions through to us at socialteam at igd.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And do watch out for the What to Expect in 2018 video, due out next week. And finally, for more on Christmas, subscribers can access our full Christmas trading and tracking reports on retail analysis. Thank you for listening.